If you've ever watched the news, the weather report, you've seen a map like this. You may have heard the, the weather person talk about a high pressure system is moved in, so expect this kind of weather, or be careful, we have a low pressure system coming in on Thursday. Let's explain a little bit about what that means. We know that hot air rises. So if we have a heat source right here, it's going to cause the air to rise, which is why we have hot air balloons. And hot air rises because it is less dense. And hot air rising and cold air falling leads us into convection currents. So in convection currents, let's say we had a heat source right here, right? And then a cold area right here. We know that the above the hot area, the air is going to rise and it's going to fall by the cold area. And then we're going to complete this convection current. And we could talk about it being responsible for plate tectonics. We see them in the ocean. We see it in the air. But what we're going to be talking about here with weather is how it affects the air and how that affects our weather. We know that all land is not the same. Here I have a desert and a forest. And if you were to walk barefoot in the desert, the sand would be really hot. But you could walk barefoot in a forest. It doesn't heat up the same way. So a desert, even if they were at similar um, latitudes, they were the similar north and southness, they were near each other, the desert would not be as hot because rock heats up faster than trees do. So the area above the desert is going to rise and the area, air above the forest is going to fall. And then we're going to end up with this convection current happening over land. All right, now if we take a look at this, we have air rising and we have air falling. When this air is falling, let's take a look at this section right here. Where this air is falling, the air is coming down and it's hitting the ground. So let's imagine we have the ground right here and the air is coming down. All right. Now take a look at this soda can. All right, it's on the ground and I'm going to put my foot on it and apply pressure. And as I apply pressure and push down on that soda can, you can guess what will happen to that soda can, right? It's going to get crushed. You would say that this soda can is being put under high pressure. All right, the pressure of my foot is causing the can to crush. So same thing would happen here, this spot right here is experiencing high pressure where the air is coming down. That's the way that I remember it. Think about putting your hand on a table and smacking it with a hammer. Would you say that's pressure or not pressure? That's definitely pressure, right? So when the air is coming down, like it is right here, with my foot on this can, it's going to smash the soda can. That's high pressure. The opposite then would be true. If the air were to be going up, then it would be low pressure. Meteorologists use a tool called a barometer to measure air pressure. And that's important because air pressure helps meteorologists to know which way the air is going to move. If we have that convection current that we were just talking about, and we have the air coming down here and going up here, well, we know that we have an area of high pressure. Remember we said that's where it's coming down. And we have an area of low pressure right here. Air moves from high pressure to low pressure. And that's what we call wind. So differences in this air pressure help meteorologists to know and to predict which way the air is going to move. And so they can see here we have high pressure right here. And we have low pressure right here. And the air is going to move from the high pressure towards the low pressure. And due to some, uh, a, a phenomenon known as a Coriolis effect, which is uh, caused by the Earth spinning, it causes the air to uh, rotate coming out of the high and going into the low. We're not going to get into that right now, uh, but that just explains why it twists like that. But the air is basically going from the high towards the low. We talked about low pressure forming when hot air rises. But really, any time air rises, you form low pressure. So when there's approaching cold front, you also get low pressure. A cold front is a really good example of how low pressure can affect the weather. So let's put a, some ground down here. And this is going to be a side view that we're drawing right here. 
right? And we're going to draw our cold air coming through. And so we know that cold air tends to be more dense, so it's going to come through low to the ground. So this is our cold air coming in right here. All right, this is cooler air. And then this air out here is warmer, and warmer air can hold more water. We know that to be true because it's humid in the summer. So the warm air is right here. And as this cold front comes through, it's going to hit this cold air and it's going to, this warm air, and it's going to push it up. And that warm air rises. All right. And we know from what we learned back here that when the air rises, you end up with low pressure. So what's happening here? You have low pressure where this cold front is coming through. This air is going to continue, and then way out here, you have high pressure. Now, this could be hundreds of miles away. When this low pressure spot happens and this air is rising, the warm, moist air starts to cool. And when it does, it forms clouds. The water can't stay in the air anymore. It's got to go somewhere. And so you end up with these big, huge clouds. And they get darker and darker and darker. And eventually, it starts to rain. And you can even end up with lightning out here. So when we think about low pressure, low pressure, I want you to think about lousy weather. Not good, right? You think about storms and kind of nasty weather. Now, way out here where we have the high pressure, right, we don't have any clouds in the sky, right? So what kind of weather? Do we get with high pressure? High pressure? I want you to think of happy weather. Clear skies, right? It's really nice out during high pressure. So when you hear somebody say they're looking at a barometer and the pressure is falling, what we mean is that it's likely about to become more stormy. When the pressure is rising, it's about to become more nice out with less chance of rain or storms. This air moving from high to low, well, this is what we call wind. So you know that when a low front a low or a low pressure system moves in, when a cold front moves through, it usually gets really windy and that would make sense why. So let's take a look at a map where you have, you might actually see this, you have low pressure right here, and the air is coming into this low pressure spot. It's coming in, swirling like this. And what kind of weather do we see all around this low pressure? We see it being really rainy and stormy. And just to refresh our memory, as we look right here, this blue with triangles is cold front. And this red right here is a warm front. Cold fronts bring really stormy weather. Warm fronts bring drizzly rain. But they're both bringing rain of some sort. Now, the strongest low pressure systems that we've ever recorded on Earth, we already said low pressure is lousy weather. Well, the lowest pressure that we've ever recorded on Earth is the lousiest weather that we've ever had on Earth. And that would be hurricanes. Hurricanes have the lowest pressure and the lousiest weather. In summary, hot air rises because it is less dense. Cold air sinks because it is more dense. Uneven heating causes convection currents. Remember, deserts heat up faster than, say, a forest or water. Air falling in the convection current forms an area of high pressure. Think of me stepping on that can. When it's coming down, it forms high pressure. When air is rising, it forms an area of low pressure. So I always just focus on thinking of stepping on that can coming down. That's high pressure. Low pressure usually means lousy weather, right? Like at a cold front or hurricanes. High pressure means happy weather. Low pressure, lousy. High pressure, happy. And hurricanes are areas of extremely low pressure. Right? So low pressure brings the lousiest of weather.